What's up guys, Dr. Mo here. So I have to make this video because I get this question so often. Um, can you do telemedicine uh, while you're abroad? Can you do telemedicine when you're outside of the US? So I've discussed it in many different formats and many different ways for physicians. Obviously telemedicine is amazing, right? Because you want to be able to travel. You want to be able to be away. But it's complicated because there are certain regulations. If you're a telemedicine company and you hire a physician, that physician has to have a license for the state in which they're seeing a patient. So if the patient is located in California and Dr. Mo is located in Washington, I need to have a California license to see that patient. Now, it might be a full-fledged license. There might be a telemedicine license that you can get. I need a license. Now, also, Washington might say you need a license in Washington if you're going to practice medicine, even if the patient is located in California. So now I need two licenses. And these things are changing all the time. So if you want to stay on top of it, it's really difficult. Um, <clears throat> the best thing you can do is go to different uh, websites where all of this is written. Of course, your own state medical board is, is a good resource, but it's going to be really difficult to find that information. So assuming you have all the proper licenses, are you allowed to be overseas? Can I be located here in Spain and see a patient in California? Well, it depends who's paying me the money. This is the part that I think gets, kind of gets complicated for a lot of physicians. Um, so if the payer is the patient, I can be located anywhere, right? As long as I have a license in the state in California and that patient is located in California, they pay me $150, they pay me $500, whatever they pay me for that particular visit, and I can see that patient. I can prescribe them medications, I can order treatments, referrals, anything, okay? Now, if the payer is not the patient, it's an insurance company or Medicare or Medicaid, then you have to abide by the Medicare Medicaid rules. Right now, CMS, Center for Med Medicare Medi Medicaid Services, and all the other ones, TRICARE, and all the other ones that fall under that, require you to be present in the US if you're going to bill them. This is critical. Now, how do you know that? How would you know that? Any one of you who's enrolled in Medicare or Medicaid has signed documents. Now, you may not know it, it might be through some Somebody enrolled you in it because you assigned them the right to sign on, beha on your behalf or you signed some document, but you didn't read it. But all of that is written somewhere. And so on my website, on the Digital Nomad Physician blog and on my podcast and everywhere else, I've kind of discussed this in more detail. If you want to know exactly where the resources are and how I know this and, you know, who's gotten in trouble for what, um, you, need to, you need to abide by their rules. Most insurance companies, so we call them commercial, insur com commercial insurance companies, they don't care. You can be located anywhere and they will pay you money for services rendered. But again, that's something you have to find out. A lot of commercial insurance companies eventually take on the, the they do the same thing that Medicare does. And so that's something that we see a lot in the United States healthcare system. But for now, you can take private insurance or you can take Medicare as long as you're in the US and you can take uh, private insurance or cash pay if you're abroad, but you're going to have to look because maybe Blue Cross has some other regulation. Maybe Blue Cross is going to sign or Molina is going to sign a contract with you, your particular group, your telemedicine group, and you must be present in this particular state to see that patient. They may, they might, they may not even let you provide services from another state. So that said, get that out of the way. Like squash that because the ent my entire concept is get away from traditional insurance. See your patients yourself, build directly to the patient, and it's going to make your life so much easier. Uh, whether you're doing like a concierge practice or direct primary care or direct care practice, just do it yourself. You know, build, uh, get the cash from the patient, and that way you're only responsible to the patient and the state medical board. So I pulled something up in here. You guys are not going to be able to see this. This is 30 Madison. Wait, can you guys even see it? <clears throat> this is... 30 Madison. So 30 Madison has a bunch of uh, brands under them. So let's see. pull it up for you guys. So these brands are Keep, Cove, what is it? Evans and Picnic. Which one's Evans? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Evans, Evans, Evans and Picnic. Um, and actually, uh, Nurx uh, just is going to fall under their brand as well. And chances are 30 Madison is going to purchase other companies as well. The reason I'm mentioning 30 Madison is because 30 Madison is a big conglomerate 
a lot of investors in there and they have all these different brands under them. So for example, you have Keeps, um, you have Cove, you have Evans. So there are just all these niche telemedicine practices, which usually don't take insurance companies. Not all, some of them do. But if they don't take insurance companies, if they don't take Medicare, if they don't take Medicaid, and they are a direct-to-consumer telehealth practice, and they just take simple cash and, you know, nothing else, then you can work for them while being abroad. So that's the kind of the nice thing. And as we, so, so that's one research that you're just going to have to put in, right? Find a niche telehealth practice that charges patients cash or doesn't, doesn't deal with Medicare, doesn't deal with Medicaid, and then that way you can still travel and be abroad. Now, the other question is, I get this a lot, and I've addressed it a lot, but I still get it a lot. So if you're not reading the content, if you're not reading the thing, it's difficult for me to get, like, I'm going to put you on the very bottom of the list of replying to you just because I don't have the time. But someone might, might wonder, well, if I am, you know, abroad for just a little bit and I get permission from the telemedicine company, can I do it? Well, you can. So you can, so you, if the telehealth company allows you to bill while you're abroad, for example, they might give you a temporary grant. They say, hey, Dr. Shori, no problem. You can be in Spain for three months. You can still continue working for us. But everything's fine, right? Now, still, it's your responsibility if you bill if you bill for that, so you're getting paid for that service, but Teladoc, for example, is doing the billing um, to Medicare. And so if Teladoc fudge, fudges it, right, then Teladoc is responsible, not you, because you're not the biller as, as a physician. So getting the permission for the telehealth company kind of protects you in a lot of ways. Just getting it in writing, a simple email, is really all you need, not just a phone call, right? And a lot of telehealth companies are okay with you doing it as long as you're not doing it full time. So, for example, if you say, well, I'm just going to move to Hong Kong for the rest of my life and I'm going to do telemedicine from there, it's not going to work. They're not going to accept it. Not only that, there's a lot of other issues with you no longer being a resident of the United States. There's a lot of legal complications. So if you're not a resident of the United States, you can't be employed. You can't even be a 1099 contractor by a lot of these companies. You could, but all the issues about um, disability and malpractice and all this stuff gets really great. And so that takes me to the next point. You need to, if you have, if you have your own malpractice insurance company, you need to let them know, like, hey, I'm gonna be abroad from time to time when I practice. Is that okay? They might say no. Um, now, some of the other uh, particular liability insurance providers that I'm very familiar with, that I've communicated with many times, they're okay with it. They're like, Absolutely, you can be wherever you want, as long as you're a resident of the United States, you're, you're a green card or uh, what is it, well, citizenship, a green card citizenship or you're sponsored to be in the U.S., but you're just traveling while doing your work, and it's perfectly okay. So that's why when I get an email and you guys ask, like, can I practice telemedicine from abroad? It's not an easy answer. There's multiple things to consider. And then if you ask which telemedicine companies allow you to be abroad, there's no telemedicine company that is going to advertise that, oh, you can be abroad for many reasons. Obviously, they don't want to give the impression that their physicians are from abroad because that's kind of what patients will think like oh they're getting their physicians from abroad they don't understand that you have to have a license in the u.s to prescribe medications treatments and initiate referrals that are paid by insurance companies so for that reason it's you got to review your contract and i'll tell you even if you review your contract and the telemedicine company sees that you're logging in from spain they may have a secure so they, they give you the permission Right, and there's nothing written in their contract, and they say, yeah, of course, go wherever you want. And they see you logging in from Spain, you might have trouble because they're they're going to flag it because they're like, why is somebody from Spain or India or wherever you're traveling from trying to log in? So you need to get a VPN, a virtual private network, for example, NordVPN, or a thousand other ones that are available because it's gonna show your IP address, your location, and a bunch of other, factors that decide, <laughs> help the browser and the server know where you're actually located. It's gonna show you as being in your home state, in home city, uh, Portland, Seattle, um, wherever, Detroit, wherever you're located. So having a VPN is really important. So the next question is, okay, well, I'll just fake it. I'm just gonna have a VPN and I'll, I won't tell Teladoc, I won't tell Doctor On Demand, I won't tell Nurks, I won't tell uh, hims and hers, that I'm going to be away in Bulgaria when I do telemedicine because my VPN is going to show that this is where I'm located. You could do that. The problem is 
let's say something bad happens. Some major complaint, uh, breach of contract, uh, lawsuit, malpractice case, or just anything, anything you can think of or you can't think of. And now an, inv an investigation takes place. And the investigation, in the investigation, you initially might have said, yeah, well, I was in the U.S. when I did this, or I was in this state when I did this. And then later they kind of say, well, actually, we checked the IP address. The IP address is registered to a VPN because that's something that's easily discoverable. You can, you can create your own VPN that is undiscoverable in, this, in the sense that nobody would ever really know where you were located. The, the point is, if you're going to go through this much headache, you're, you're actually being dishonest. You're taking so many steps to be dishonest that it backfires. Now, I, as a U.S. citizen, believe I have the right to be in any location that I want, and it is my right to be anywhere that I want. If I'm a 1099 contractor with Teladoc, with Doctor on Demand, with anybody, I'm a 1099 contractor. I, You are my client, right? I am offering you my services and you're going to pay me for my services i have the right to be anywhere i want i will use any vpn i want if somebody asks me where are you located none of your business sorry it's not information that i divulge to anybody i'll tell you where i'm located um that's that's the way i think but again if you are going to go through that process and kind of lie about it or fake it do understand that you're going to get in trouble you, i mean if shit hits the fan you would get in trouble and so that's not something you really want to mess with but there are a lot of telemedicine companies right now. You guys are forgetting. You guys are looking at all the big players, but there's a lot of little telehealth companies, little telemedicine companies that are popping up everywhere uh, for a niche uh, disease or diagnosis. And so you can reach out to those and say, hey, I'm, I will work for you. I'll be located in Portland, but I'll probably travel. I have no idea where I'll travel. Um, they might say, okay, well, if you travel in another state, you may, you know, you need their state license in order to do that. Perfect. You can certainly do that. Um, it's going to be really difficult for them to prove that you were located in this particular place. Um, and then, you you know, for example, if let's say you're in New York and New York says you must have a license in order to see a patient in California. Well, if you were traveling and you happen to be in New York and nobody can really prove that you were in New York, right? I mean, they could take your cell phone tower uh, data, they could look at your old IP address, they could see what, you know, where you stayed in Airbnb, then you're in trouble. But the point is, is somebody really going to go through that if you're just traveling short term? Probably not. The chances of that is really low. But if you relocate to another country and you're doing this full time, then my suggestion is just reframe the entire problem. I am a physician who no longer wants to be located in the United States. I want to maintain my license there. I want to be a resident there and all that stuff. But I want to have the option of seeing patients outside of the U.S. Great. So focus on telehealth companies that allow you to do that. And so you're gonna to have to reach out to each one individually. Number two, as I always say, find your own patients, be your own, be your own boss in a way, okay? this is the generic saying, like go find your own patients that you really like and build your own little telehealth company, build your own little network with other physicians, with other people, instead of relying on a direct to consumer telehealth company or another medical group. So that's it. I hope this is helpful, guys. Leave comments. You can check out my website, DRMO. That's my email, drmo at digitalnomadphysician.com or the website at digitalnomadphysician.com. Take care.